Hello, glad to see you on my channel. I really value it. And today I want to share with you a wonderful story. It's a dramatic story that will come as a total shock to everybody. It is a really amazing story. So enjoy watching it. Having colored the last cloud, five-year-old Maria looked at her drawing once more and smiled dreamily, and then went to the kitchen where her mother was preparing dinner. Mommy, I drew you a picture. She told her mother, holding out a piece of paper. The woman smiled and, having washed her hands, sat down on a stool. Let's see, she said to her daughter, taking another masterpiece from her hands. Well, tell me who you have depicted here. The girl came to the table and showing with her finger one by one all the people and animals depicted by her, began to explain to her mother who is who. This is you, mommy. This is daddy. This is my big brother, this is me, and this is my little sister, and this is our cat and dog. A happy smile played on the child's lips. Selena stroked her daughter's head and smiled a little sadly. She had given birth to Maria at the age of 25 to a man she loved very much, except that it turned out that his plans were not to become a father, and having learned of Selena's pregnancy, he urged her to have an abortion putting her in front of a choice. And Selena made her choice. Having collected all her things, she moved in with her mom, and they never saw Maria's father again. Is it beautiful, mommy? Asked the girl, looking at her mother. Very beautiful, Selena answered. Maria had long dreamed of having a big family. She watched with sadness when fathers played with children on the playground. They sat on their shoulders, caught from the slide, swung on the swings and together in the sandbox molded dolls. The girl believed that one day she too would have a father, and also an older brother, who would protect her and help her do her homework, and a little sister, whom she would take care of, and when she grew up, she would become her best friend. There were no animals in their house, because her grandmother was allergic to wool, and Maria, like any child, dreamed of a pet, but she didn't know who she wanted more, a cat or a dog, so in her drawing she depicted both, believing that one day she would have them. Selena had been working at the neighborhood dentist's office for 10 years. She liked her job, but for the past few months she had been going there as if it were hard labor. Relations with the new head of the department did not work out, but not hers alone, and she was already looking for a new place and an unexpected call from a former colleague set things right. So, come to us, said the woman, having listened to Selena's complaints. We need a doctor right now, and you have good experience. Veronica, I'd love to. Are you sure they'll take you? Selena immediately perked up. Of course she will. I'll put in a good word for you. Veronica had been working in a private clinic for a couple of years and was happy with everything. She called Selena back the next day and told her she could come in for an interview tomorrow. The owner of the clinic, Alexander, carefully read all the documents and looked at Selena with a smile. Well, welcome to us. He said, when are you ready to start? Selena smiled back. I have to work two weeks at my old place, but I could start working here on my days off. She replied, why the weekend? Work your ass off and then come back after you're fired. Selena walked home with a happy smile on her lips. The schedule was better here and the salary was twice as much. Two weeks flew by quickly and she was happy to start working at the new place. How do you like it here? Veronica asked after a week. I like it very much. Veronica, thank you very much. Selena looked at her friend with gratitude. That's great. Veronica smiled enigmatically, and our Alexander obviously likes you, she said. How do you know that? Selena asked. She hadn't noticed anything like that, although she liked her new boss. All she knew about him was that he was 37 years old and loved his job. He was an interesting man, and Selena had no doubt that he was married, even though he didn't have a wedding ring on his finger. I've seen the way he looks at you, I'm telling you. We'll marry you off, Veronica said. Isn't he married? Selena asked immediately. Details of his personal wife I do not know. 
but he's been divorced for three years. The only thing is that he has a son, Slavka. You'll see him sometime. Alexander sometimes brings him to the clinic. He seems to be a normal kid, 10 years old. Maybe that's why he didn't marry again. Not everyone needs husbands with children. Selena understood that perfectly well. She'd had several affairs over the years, but no one was in a hurry to marry her, not wanting to take care of her daughter. Veronica had been right, and a romance began between Selena and Alexander. Maria, tomorrow we go out not alone with you, but in a very pleasant company. Selena told her daughter one night, and with whom? She asked, looking at her mother curiously. Remember, you always wanted to have a father and an older brother. Selena smiled, because today Sasha had proposed to her, which she had gladly accepted, finally feeling happy for the first time in so many years. And we'll go out with them, the girl asked excitedly. With them, Selena replied. Mommy, will we have a little sister and a cat and a dog too? Well, they have a cat, said Selena, because just recently Alexander bought a kitten. As for the rest, I can't say yet. Maria was looking forward to Saturday. She found her old drawing and began to look at it. Thank you, Santa Claus, she said. After all, she had written him a letter for New Year's Eve, not asking for toys, but asking him to fulfill her long-held dream of a big family. On Saturday, Maria quickly ate her breakfast. She couldn't wait to go to the playground, where her future father and brother would be waiting for her and her mom. The man sat down and handed Maria a box containing a large brown puppy that could walk and bark. Hello, Maria, he said, smiling good-naturedly at the girl. Your mom said that you dream of having a dog. Of course, it's not a real one, but we'll be sure to get a live puppy later too. Honestly, honestly, the girl asked excitedly. Of course, honestly, replied the man. We'll take a walk now, and then we'll go to our house, and you'll play with Caramel. And she is small, asked the girl. Very small. I'll show her to you now. The man took out his phone and showed Mary a picture of a kitten. And the girl glowed. She's so pretty, she said. Alexander got up and called his son, who was running around the playground with the boys. Tony, come here. The boy came over to them. He didn't look happy. Tony, this is Maria. I told you about her. Hi, he said nonchalantly, turning to look at the running boys. It was obvious that he wanted to run with them, and he wasn't interested in his newly baked sister. Hi, Maria answered, a little upset. Dad, can I go? He asked, looking at his father. Go, said and looked at Selena. Slavka is not a gift, but I hope you get along with him. Maria was swinging on the swing, looking with genuine adoration at Alexander, who was swinging her. She thought that all her dreams were bound to come true. After the walk, they went to a cafe, where her future father bought her a very tasty ice cream, and then all together went to visit Alexander and Tony, where Maria was not torn away from Caramel. She was not even upset by the fact that Tony did not want to communicate with her, closed in his room. Selena and Alexander got married, and Maria moved into a new spacious apartment where Caramel was waiting for her. She was completely happy with her new life, unlike Tony, who continued to ignore her, as well as Selena, who was trying hard to make the child feel comfortable. Tony, let's have tea. I made your favorite muffins. Selena walked into her husband's son's room. I don't want any. He said without taking his eyes off the computer game. It had been several months since the wedding, but the boy's attitude remained the same. He doesn't accept us, Selena said to her husband one day, sighing heavily. He will, give him time, replied the man, hugging his wife. The man himself was worried, repeatedly tried to talk to his son, but he only replied that they were complete strangers to him and he did not want to communicate with them at all. Tony did not conflict with neither Selena nor Maria, but just tried to pretend that they did not exist. But as time went on, he softened a little towards his new family. Why are you crying? One day he came into Maria's room when he heard her crying. 
I have a test tomorrow, and I don't understand anything. I for homework put a day. Sobbing said the girl. Well, show me what you don't understand. He said, sitting down next to her. Here. Maria put the math book in front of him and showed him the examples she couldn't solve. How easy it is, he said, and began to explain how easy it is to solve. Algebra was very difficult for the girl, while her new brother grasped everything on the fly and was an excellent student unlike her. Maria listened attentively, trying to understand. They solved a few examples together, and she began to understand more or less what she couldn't understand at all. Thank you, the girl said gratefully. It's okay, you're welcome, he replied. Tony, why don't you like my mom? She's nice, isn't she? Suddenly Maria asked. I like her, the boy answered, smiling a little. He left the room, and Maria looked at him and smiled. She realized that Tony had finally accepted her and her mother. Now all that was missing for her complete happiness was a little sister and a dog. She's so tiny, Maria said, standing by the crib and admiring her newborn baby sister, Yulia. You were like that too, said Selena, hugging her daughter with one arm. Nice. Tony smiled at Selena. I agree, she replied, ruffling his hair. And while she's sleeping, come on, I'll feed you. They quietly left the room, shutting the door as Buddy, their one-and-a-half-year-old beagle dog, immediately rushed at his feet, wagging his tail and twirling happily. You little bully, said Maria, petting the dog. We should take him for a walk. Selena looked at the children. Let's wash our hands, eat lunch and go for a walk. After a quick lunch, the children picked up Buddy and headed outside, and Maria thought that dreams are bound to come true if they come from the heart. I can't wait to get rid of him. Maria sighed, looking at her friend Sarah, with whom they were preparing for the final exams together. And don't tell me, she replied, puzzling over a physics problem. You and I will never solve this abracadabra. When is your brother coming? She looked at her friend. He should be here any minute. Only you ask him, or he will start to attack me again, that he studied for me all these years. Maria said, Tony graduated from school with a gold medal, and she had a few C's for the last year, and one of them was in physics. Since Tony had moved out, her grades had dropped dramatically. When Maria heard someone coming, she went out into the hallway, and there stood Tony, with Nancy hanging around his neck. You're going to strangle her, he said, smiling at her sister, and she unclasped her arms and stood on the floor. Hi. Maria walked over and pecked her brother on the cheek. Sarah looked out of the room and waved at Tony, rewarding him with a smile. Are you studying for your exams, you two-timers? He asked Maria, smiling. With a pleading look in her eyes, the girl looked at her brother. No, no, and again, no. Come on, girls, turn on your brains and yourself. He replied. Please, 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 please. Literally begged Maria and Sarah put her hands together and brought them to her face. She looked as if the world was about to end. Tony sighed and shook his head disapprovingly. What's there to do with you? I'll just eat first. Why don't you heat up something tasty for me? I'm on my way, Maria answered cheerfully. Sarah, let's go to the kitchen. She smiled at Tony and followed Maria. Well, I'm going for a walk with Buddy, said Nancy and went to her room to change. Tony left and satisfied girlfriends, having tea, settled down on the sofa in Maria's room. Maria, I like your brother. Sarah confessed to her friend. Is he seeing anyone? His personal life is shrouded in fog, Maria said with a laugh. Anyway, he hasn't brought anyone here. I think he likes me too. Sarah smiled dreamily. Help me to have an affair with him. How can I help you? Maria asked. Well, we should go out together, maybe to a club. I think that could be arranged, she said. Thank you, Sarah chuckled. What about you and Max? She asked. Maria met Max four months ago. He was in his third year at the Institute and was three years older than Maria. They met 
and she liked the young man very much, except that he constantly hinted at intimacy, and the girl was not ready for it. I don't know. Everything seems fine, but he's always hinting at a cupcake. I understand him, but I'm not ready yet. I confess to my friend Marie. Well, what's a relationship without that? If you're going to keep him, he'll find someone more agreeable. Maria understood that. You're right. We need to make up our minds, she answered, sighing. Do you love him at all? Sarah asked. I think I do. Do you or do you? Maria thought for a moment. She liked Max a lot, but she didn't know if it was love. She had two men in her life, whom she thought were perfect, and she didn't know Max well enough to know whether he was the one she wanted or not. She also realized that there was no relationship without intimacy, but something inside her told her not to hurry. How long are we going to hold hands? Disgruntled tone asked Max in their last meeting. I'm not ready yet. Maria answered honestly, not yet. And how long do we have to wait? Listen, Maria, this is a kindergarten, not a relationship. Understand, but I'm not satisfied with this. Let's meet at my place on Saturday. We'll sit down, have a drink, and... He smiled enigmatically. I can't on Saturday. Maria had no plans, and the words came out of her lips. Max gloomed. Sunday, he asked. I don't know yet. Maria shrugged her shoulders. Maria, I thought you were a grown man, and you're acting like a juvenile dynamo. You're rushing me. Max, I've never been with anyone before, so it's not easy for me to decide. She admitted it. Look for yourself, but I'm no longer satisfied to walk hand in hand and kiss in your entrance. Max made it clear that he was ready to end their relationship if it didn't go to the next level. All she kept thinking was that she had to make up her mind and that she should have spent Saturday with him for nothing. Maria, what's up? Let's go clubbing on Saturday. Would Tony agree to go? Sarah asked. I don't know. I don't know if he has a girlfriend or not. I'll ask him, but I can't guarantee that he'll go. After seeing Sarah off, Maria immediately called her brother. Hi, long time no see. He answered his sister's call with a smile. Tony, come with us on Saturday to the club. Maria said right away. With you? Well, with me and Sarah, you can bring a friend or two. Don't you have your own company? He asked. Sarah likes you. I didn't tell you that. I know. Tony answered calmly. And? And nothing. So you're not going to the club without me. No offense. Shit. Tony, what's wrong? Maria's been thinking. She seems like a nice looking girlfriend. You got a girlfriend. I don't have one right now, but that doesn't mean Sarah will. Don't pry. If you say no, it's no. What if it's just for company? I don't want to. I had plans on Saturday, so no clubs. That's a shame. Bye then. Maria sighed and collapsed on the bed. Sarah will be upset, she thought but for some reason she was glad that her brother didn't like her friend. With Max Maria agreed to spend Sunday, and on Saturday, she went to the club with Sarah, who had a friend of her sister's working there, and thanks to him they went quietly, despite their age. Her parents let their daughter go with a squeak, but she said she was going with a large group, and not until the morning. After an hour of dancing, Maria noticed Max and her heart froze in her chest for a moment, and a lump came to her throat. Her boyfriend was making out with some girl, obviously older than him, dancing a slow dance with her. His hands were stroking the girl's ass, and Maria suddenly laughed hysterically. A shoal, said Sarah, watching her friend's boyfriend, and it's a good thing it didn't come to a cupcake. Sarah, we agreed that tomorrow, we would spend the day together, and everything else was implied. Maria said, and a tear ran down her cheek. It's good that it turned out that way. I didn't like Max, you know. I just didn't tell you, Sarah confessed. Let's go to the bar. I'm thirsty, said Maria and brushed a tear off her cheek. Maybe we shouldn't. Sarah asked, looking at her friend with sympathy. We should, 
Maria headed towards the bar. She felt so bad now that she wanted to get drunk and forget herself. The most she'd had before was a little champagne on New Year's Eve. But here she watered a whole shot and drank it alone. Maria, are you crazy? Sarah groaned, noticing that her friend was dramatically intoxicated. I'm fine. She replied and asked the bartender to repeat the shot. Where to? Pull over. The girl looked at the bartender and turned to him. No more, sorry. She took her drunk friend under her arm and dragged her toward the club's exit, hailing a cab on the way. Tony's address, she said to Maria. It's close by. Maria mumbled and rested her head on her friend's shoulder. They're all such a shoals. Dogs, I hate them. Aha. Uh -huh. Give me your brother's address. You can't go home like that. My parents would kill me, Sarah said. There, Maria waved her hand to the left. Sarah sighed and took her friend's cell phone out of her purse. Finding it in Tony's contacts, she called him and told him that she was bringing Maria to him now. What a gift. Tony was standing near the entrance when Sarah got out of the cab and then helped Maria, who was barely on her feet. Here you go, sign your name. Sarah said, Tony, please don't say anything to your parents. You're sober, Maria's wasted. How so? He asked, supporting his sister by the waist, so that she did not fall. Oh, Slavka, hi, what are you doing here? Asked Maria, smiling stupidly. I'm going home, and you bring her to her senses, please. Sarah got back in the cab. Come on, alcoholic. Tony smiled and headed with Maria towards the driveway. You're all such a shoals. Tony, tell me, are you a dog too? Hey. Maria stopped and looked into her brother's eyes. Of course I am. Go on. He led his sister to the entryway again and pulled out a key with his free hand. Here. You. You don't know how to love at all. All you want to do is fuck, nothing else. Aha. Uh -huh. Tony agreed with her and opened the door. Maria staggered into the entryway and immediately sat down near the radiator, covering her head with her hands. Get up. She sat up. He said and stood across from his sister. I cannot. Maria answered quietly. Tony lifted her off the floor, took her in his arms and called the elevator. You'll get the belt for sure. He said as he stepped into the elevator. Whatever. Maria yawned widely, I'm dizzy. Really? Tomorrow you'll tell me why you got so drunk, you disgrace. Outside the apartment, Tony set his sister on her feet to open the door, then helped her take off her shoes and led her into the bathtub, where he turned on the cold water and began washing her face. It's cold. My makeup will smudge. Maria was indignant. Isn't it too early for you to put on so much plaster and get so drunk? Angrily, he asked and turned on the warm water to better wash the makeup off Maria's face. It's the circumstances, Maria replied with a slurred tongue. What are they? Tony asked. Max, the bastard. I saw him with some girl. He was making out with her and mashing her ass. And I, I'm an idiot. I was gonna give it to him tomorrow. Maria sighed heavily and cried. Who is Max? Are you going to have sex with him? Tony turned off the water, took Maria by the shoulders and gave her a good shake. Look at me. Angrily he said, and Maria immediately quieted down and timidly looked into her brother's eyes. Are you a fool? Isn't it too early for you to grow up? I thought he loved me. Maria answered with a sniffle. We'll talk later. Tony took a towel and began to wipe her face. Now you almost look like a human again. Maria got to her feet. She felt dizzy and her eyes were double visioned. Suddenly she felt a bout of nausea and covered her mouth with her palm. Tony took her to the bathroom without a word. Next time before you get drunk, remember this, maybe it'll stop you. He said, holding her hair back. Mary felt a little better washing her face again. Tony took her into the kitchen and turned on the kettle. I'll call my parents now. I won't tell them about your state of incapacity. 
but we'll talk to you again tomorrow. He said and dialed his father, naturally waking him up with the call. Tony said that Maria would spend the night at his place and that they would be there for lunch tomorrow. Then he poured chamomile tea for his sister and after she drank it, sent her to bed. Tony, lie with me till I fall asleep. Maria said sadly, covering herself with a blanket. Shall I tell you another story? Tony turned off the light. Please, Maria asked, are you feeling better? Tony asked and lay down next to his sister. Okay, not so much. She answered and laid her head on his chest. Why is everyone like this? She yawned and closed her eyes. Everyone is different. It's too early for you to sleep with men. He replied, looking up at the ceiling. That's not the point. He was with someone else and we were supposed to meet tomorrow. It's disgusting. It's good then that I saw today. I didn't make a big mistake. That Max doesn't love you, so you don't need him. Go back to sleep. Tony fixed the blanket. I'm gonna go in the other room. I'm sleepy too. Nah, wait till I fall asleep. Tony, why don't you have a girlfriend? Maria yawned and put her palm under her head. It's too early for me to think about relationships, so nothing serious. He answered. But there is not serious. Sure, enough of that. My personal life is my business. You're all the same. Maria sighed sadly. Men are a little differently organized than women. I think you know that. Maria, go to sleep. I'm already passing out. Tony yawned and closed his eyes. It was not a good morning. Maria opened her eyes and let out a slight groan. She was thirsty and had a headache. Tony. She moaned, but her brother didn't hear her. She got up from the bed and pulled Tony's t-shirt out of the closet. Putting it on, she went into the kitchen. I'm awake. Doesn't your head hurt? He asked, putting the phone away. Bo, bo, bo. And I'm thirsty. Maria poured herself a full glass of water and drank it almost in one gulp. Here, I went to the pharmacy and bought you some magic pills. He handed her a packet of hangover pills. That's cool. Thank you. She swallowed one right away. You want breakfast? Uh uh. Maria went back to her room and got her cell phone out of her purse. While she'd been asleep, she'd gotten a text from Sarah, a friend asking how she was feeling, and there was also a message from Max. Hey babe, what time should we meet tonight? He texted. No, we're not. Go see the girl from the club. Maria replied and blocked his number, then headed back to the kitchen. Tony, just please don't say anything to your parents, she asked her brother. I wonder if you promise it's the first and last time. He answered, I promise, I've had enough. I hope you'll send Max away. I already did. Good for you. You should be thinking about your exams and how you're gonna get into your vet school. I'll study with you, of course, but just do your best, please, said Tony. Really? Will you help me? Of course I'll help you, but I won't take the exams for you. Thank you. When do we start? We'll start next week. Are you sure you're going to go to veterinary school? Yeah, teeth aren't my thing. You're running away from your family. Tony smiled. I'm sorry about that. Do you really want to pick your mouth? I'm going into prosthetics. It's a very good, high paying job. Veterinarian's not bad either. No argument there. I'm kind of hungry. Maria felt her stomach rumbling. Scrambled eggs, scrambled eggs. What a choice. The girl smiled. Well, I'm not a cook. Tony took cheese, eggs and sausage out of the refrigerator. Eggs and sausage and a cheese sandwich, Maria replied. The day was sunny and after breakfast Maria offered her brother a little walk in the park, which was not far from his house, and then go home. As promised, Tony didn't tell his parents anything about Maria, and from the next week he began to study with her every night and in the end Maria got on the budget, which was celebrated by the whole family in the restaurant. Max quickly got away from her, and the girl was glad that everything turned out so. After all, if she had not seen him by chance in the club, she would have made a big mistake. 
Now her short-lived romance with Max was a lesson for her, and Maria decided that only for a great love, she would give all of herself to a man. In fact, that was her next desire to find love. Okay, let's get some flowers first. Today was Solana's birthday, and it was decided to just sit down tonight as a family. What are you getting, Mom? Maria asked him. A secret. Tony smiled enigmatically. Oh, come on, I'll see it anyway. When I give it to you, then you'll see. Are you coming to the club with us on Saturday? I could. Carlo's been dragging his feet. He really likes your Sarah. He wants to keep seeing her. Is he all right? Sarah likes you in general. He's okay. You know him. I don't think your girlfriend still likes me. She does. I know she does. Maria, this subject is closed. Tony parked outside a flower store. After choosing a beautiful bouquet, they drove to the house, chatting about Maria's studies and Tony's work, without touching on the topic of liking anymore. Mom, happy birthday. Tony handed Selena the bouquet and then pulled out a long velvet case containing a gold bracelet. Well, you've made me golden today. Selena smiled and then hugged Tony and Maria in turn, kissing each on the cheek. Her husband had given her diamond earrings. Maria had given her a gold zodiac sign pendant from this morning, and here was a bracelet. Come on into the kitchen. I didn't cook anything. We ordered everything from an Italian restaurant. Father and younger sister were already sitting at the table, waiting only for them. Maria loved it when they gathered like this, their friendly family cheerfully discussing everything that could be discussed. Saturday. Sarah smiled strangely at Carlo, knowing full well that he sympathized with her, but she was still very fond of Tony, who paid no attention to her. Even the slow dance he preferred to dance with his sister rather than her. Sarah doesn't like your friend. During one slow dance, Maria said, watching her friend. If she doesn't, she doesn't. No one is forcing you to. Tony replied indifferently. Are you still not ready for a serious relationship? Maria, you like to serve. Tony smiled without answering her question. Here I have no one, no one likes me, I do not date anyone. What's there to hide? And you're all about secrets. You could have told me. We used to tell each other everything, but now you're distant. Distant? We see each other almost every day. What can I tell you? I just started working. I'm not in a serious relationship. Are you happy? Are there any non-serious ones? Maria didn't give up. I'll bite you. You're so clingy. I had some. But it's over now. Answered Tony. Is the girl that bored? That's it. Stop torturing me about my personal life. The fast music started again and their conversation stopped. After a while, Sarah thought a bit towards Carlo and then even admitted to her friend that he was okay. Anyway, after the club, they took a cab to her house because it was too far to see her off on foot. My place? Asked Tony to Maria. Come on, it's closer to you. She agreed. When they got to the floor, Maria was the first to notice the girl standing outside her brother's apartment. What are you doing here? He asked and Maria realized that Tony was not at all happy to see this overnight guest. Who is it? The girl glared angrily at Maria. None of your business. Get away from the door. Tony pulled out his keys, but the girl blocked his way. Who the hell is this little girl, I ask you? She shouted. Get out of my way and get out of my way, said Tony, coming almost right up to her. So this is what you traded me for. She grinned, casting a scornful glance at Maria. We didn't have the kind of relationship that would make you throw tantrums at me now. I see what's wrong with you. She shifted her gaze to Maria. And to you. Girl, I want to tell you that you shouldn't get involved with this dog. He'll find a replacement in no time. She threw a hateful glance at Tony and then went to the elevator. Shall we go to sleep or watch a movie? Tony asked when they were in his apartment. We could watch a movie, so you dumped her. Stopped seeing her. I didn't expect her to come over. We weren't serious. She didn't seem to think so. 
Maria answered and went to the kitchen. She had voiced that she didn't want a relationship when we started dating. She was interested in meeting and having a good time. Maria, I'm not a monk, and I was fine with it. And then it started. Well, when one is no longer satisfied with the format of a relationship, one should break up. I don't get it. I'm against it. Maria looked at her brother with judgment. You're right to be against it. Let's go to the room to choose a movie. Having settled down on the bed, they began to watch the latest movie. Maybe a mystical thriller? Asked Tony. No, no, no. Not soaps. And not a horror movie. Comedy. I could do that. Opting for a comedy they both hadn't seen, Maria and Tony made themselves comfortable and stared at the big TV hanging on the wall in front of them. Opening her eyes, Maria realized that she was actually lying on top of Tony. Her head was resting against his chin and one of his hands was resting on her back. She froze for a moment, then slowly raised her head to see if he was asleep. He was asleep. Apparently, they'd both passed out without finishing the movie. She decided and gently removed his hand before sliding off him and rolling to the other side of the bed, immediately wrapping herself in the blanket. Strange feelings came over the girl and she blushed with embarrassment. Maybe she shouldn't stay at Tony's sleepover anymore, she thought, and closed her eyes, slowly drifting into sleep. She woke up a second time to find no one in bed but her, and then she heard the front door open. She got up, adjusted her shirt, pulled up her jeans and left the room. Hi, Sophia, said Tony with a smile and handed her a bag. Bought us yogurt and pastries for breakfast. I, Maria took the package and went to the kitchen, thinking all the time about the first time she woke up and the feelings that came over her at that moment. Of course, she loved Tony. There was no question about that but how did she love him? For the first time, that question began to roll around in her head. It was embarrassing to have such thoughts, but she couldn't get rid of them. Why are you like this? Tony asked, obviously noticing that his sister was puzzled about something, because she looked very pensive. Nothing. Maria smiled immediately and put the pies in the microwave. What are your plans for today? He asked her. Nothing. I'll have breakfast and go home. And you? Answered Maria. I want to rest today. I have a lot of work tomorrow. I want to watch a movie. Because we didn't watch it yesterday. After these words, Maria blushed and immediately turned away. You can keep me company. We'll order sushi for lunch, watch movies, and in the evening, nothing. I just need to wash up and get ready for the institute. Maria answered. Well, it won't take long to wash and you can do it at my place, and packing for the institute takes a lot of time. Well, then let's watch another movie, and after sushi I'll go. Maria agreed, unable to find the words to explain her haste. Tony began to suggest movies to watch, and this time they decided to watch sci-fi. Maria snuggled away from her brother, deciding for herself that from now on she would avoid tactile contact with him. Maria took a cab home, Tony, of course, insisted on driving her home, but she convinced her brother to stay and rest before the hard work of the day. All week, Maria found different excuses not to meet Tony, but on Saturday, he came to visit them. After having lunch with everyone, Maria went to her room and sat down at her computer. May I? Tony knocked on her shit and, without waiting for an answer, came into the room when the parents together with Julia went for a walk with Buddy. Why didn't you leave? Maria asked, and without getting up from the computer chair, turned to face him. You didn't want to go either. Maria, you've been avoiding me all week. What have I done wrong? He asked and sat down on the bed. You imagined it. Maria made a carefree appearance and smiled. How about honestly? Tony kept his gaze on her. Honestly, she replied. Shall we go outside too? The weather's nice today he suggested. I don't feel like going out today. What do you feel like doing? I wanted to read something. It's for studying. Am I interrupting? I can read later, after you leave. I wanted to invite you to a concert. 
The golden gramophone is in two weeks. I got two tickets. Maybe you should go with a girl. It sounded a bit snide, which Maria didn't mean, but it came out that way. I don't have a girlfriend. Maria, what the hell is wrong with you? After last weekend, you've been avoiding me. Now you're talking like I'm guilty of something. What's wrong? I'm not leaving here until you answer me. Said Tony, completely unaware of what was going on with his sister. I just don't think I should have any more sleepovers with you. Maria admitted. What happened to make you feel that way all of a sudden? Tony, you and I fell asleep without finishing the movie. And when I woke up, I, the girl was silent, trying to find the right words. That? Tony asked, waiting for her to answer. We didn't sleep like brother and sister. She said and blushed remembering that day. And how did we sleep? He asked, not taking his eyes off her and smiling slightly. In a cuddle as, as, well, you know, as who, answered Maria. Now I see. So you were confused by the fact that we slept cuddled together. Tony got up from the bed and squatted next to the computer chair where Maria was sitting. Doesn't that make you uncomfortable? She asked and looked away. Maria, we are not brother and sister, he said, continuing to smile. Tony, I don't know what you mean by that. Maria stood up abruptly from her chair and Tony rose to follow her. Once between him and the computer chair, Maria became nervous and stepped aside abruptly. What if I told you that I treat you completely differently from my sister? Asked Tony, not realizing how his heart suddenly hammered in Maria's chest after those words. She turned around and leaned back against the computer desk, feeling her cheeks flaming. Otherwise, what's that like? She asked quietly. Tony came so close to her that she could hear his heart beating as fast as hers. I think you can see how. He answered, tilting his head so that his lips almost touched Maria's. Without realizing what she was doing, Maria put her arms around Tony's neck and closed her eyes. She didn't have to wait long. He immediately began kissing her, wrapping his arms around her waist and pulling her against him. The realization that she was kissing Tony suddenly made Maria abruptly break the kiss. The girl pushed away the man she had considered her brother for years and took a step back, trying to regain her breath. Tony, go away. She said and put her hand out in front of her, letting him know not to come near her. Maria, let's just talk. He said, in no hurry to leave her room. About what? We shouldn't have. Oh my God. Maria clutched her head and sighed heavily. Her thoughts were jumbled and her soul was suddenly gripped by an incomprehensible fear. Not to mention the embarrassment she was feeling right now. Maria, calm down. Sit down and we'll just talk. Tony replied, seeing her state of mind. We've ruined everything. How can we continue to communicate after something like this? She looked at him with eyes full of frustration. Please just listen to me. Tony took her hand, but Maria immediately pulled her hand out of his arm. What are you so afraid of? I realize I've shocked you, but Maria, I've been looking at you for a long time now, not as a sister, but as a girl I really like even more than that. To be honest, I've been trying to fight my feelings for you for a long time, but I can't treat you like a sister. Jesus, Tony, what are you talking about? Maria covered her face with her palms. What's wrong with a man liking a woman? Well, we grew up together for a while, during which we got to know each other from all sides. You and I spent a lot of time together. Were we not good for each other? Answer yourself. Do you love me? Of course I love you, Tony, but how? Maria was suddenly silent. She didn't understand how she loved him. A brother? That's not the way you kissed me a few minutes ago. I don't know what came over me. It was a mistake. Maria answered, I don't think so. Tony said, and they both heard the front door open and Buddy barking. We'll talk later. Let's go and have tea. I've brought a delicious cake, he said afterwards. I don't want anything. Maria went to the window and pulled back the curtain and looked out into the distance. 
Tony quietly came up behind her and put his arm around her waist. Have you lost your mind with everything? Maria bounced away from him like a scalded woman. Good. We'll get back to this conversation later. Tony sighed and walked out of her room. Is it Maria going to have tea? Selena asked when everyone came into the kitchen except Maria. I'll get her, said Nancy, and went to her sister's room. Finding Maria sitting on the bed and covering her face with her palms, Nancy was very surprised, not understanding what had suddenly happened to her sister. Maria, what are you doing? She asked and sat down beside her. Nothing. She sighed and took her hands away from her face. What's wrong? Did you have a fight with Tony? No, just some problems. It's nothing. Maria forced a smile. Let's have tea then. Everyone's in the kitchen. Come on. Maria got out of bed. She didn't want her parents to think she had something wrong. At the table, Maria tried not to look at Tony, feeling that he occasionally glanced at her. She finished her tea quickly and saying that she had a lot of studying to do, retired to her room. When she saw Tony's car outside the institute, Maria stopped, feeling her heart beat faster. Is the groom meeting her again? Mickey asked, appearing as if out of thin air. Of course, answered Maria, and having gathered her courage, went to the car. Tony immediately got out of the car. Hi, he said with a smile. Why did you come here? Maria asked, giving him a stern look. We didn't agree yesterday. He answered and opened the car door. Get in. Let's go and sit somewhere. Maria silently got into the car and fastened her seatbelt. What frightened her most was that she wanted to repeat yesterday's kiss and more. Tony stopped the car at the nearest cafe. Have you come to your senses? He asked after they'd ordered. More than okay, Maria replied. Maria, I want you and me to be together, said Tony. And how are you going to tell your parents that? Imagine how they would react to such news. No, nothing can happen between us. And I'm so sorry that we ruined the beautiful relationship we had with each other. Maria replied, staring at the menu. Our relationship will be even more beautiful and our parents will be shocked for a while, but everything will be fine. It's like you keep forgetting that we are not brother and sister or blood relatives. There's no impediment to our relationship. Tony, I, I don't know what to say at all. Maria looked at him with a pained look. Fighting herself was very difficult, especially since he really wasn't her brother in essence. Let's tell our parents today that you and I are getting married, he suggested. The girl's eyes widened and she paled and opened her mouth to stare at him. Well, not directly in the forehead, but we'll talk carefully, explain that we love each other. Do you mean it now? Maria regained the power of speech. Absolutely. Tony put his hand on top of hers. Maria, I love you. How long have you loved me? She asked shyly, starting to blush. I realized about three years ago, but I can't say for how long. Does it matter? A waiter came to their table and brought their order. Shall we go to my place after the cafe? Tony asked as the waiter left. Did you just invite me for a cupcake? Maria asked, blushing even more. No, I just want to be alone with you. I promise I won't hit on you. Unless you want to, nothing will happen, he answered. Amazed at herself, Maria drove to Tony's house, having previously informed her parents that she wouldn't come home tonight. She should have said no, but instead she agreed, unable to cope with her own desires. Tony had kept his word. He didn't even try to kiss Maria when they were in his apartment, but Maria really wanted him to kiss her, and despite the fact that she was afraid of intimacy with a man, because she had never had anyone else, she'd also wanted it, or rather to say she wanted it with him, and to get married too, even thought about the fact that they would have two children. What are you doing? Tony asked her, seeing how Maria shook her head. Nothing, just a little blurry in the eyes. She lied, walking into the bedroom. Are we going to watch movies again? She asked. Whatever you want. We can watch a movie, 
We can just talk. He said. Let's watch Guardians of the Galaxy. Sarah went to the movies last night. She liked the movie. She says it's already on the net. If it is, let's do it. A few minutes later, Maria and Tony were already sitting on the bed at a pioneer's distance from each other. He raised his arm at shoulder level, inviting Maria to settle down next to him. Realizing this without words, she scooted closer and even covered her eyes for a moment when his hand came down on her shoulder. Because of the pile of thoughts in her head, Maria wasn't up for a movie, so she couldn't stand it. Tony, kiss me please. Suddenly she whispered, after about half an hour of watching the movie. The man smiled and gently touched her lips with his lips. And then something happened that Maria didn't expect from herself. Tony didn't insist on more than a kiss, but he was inclined to it by Maria, not saying a word, but rather quickly releasing him from his clothes and caressing his body with her hands. Time to wake up. Maria heard Tony's quiet voice and opened her eyes slightly. Five more minutes. She whispered back and a smile appeared on her lips. Sophia. He answered, covering her neck with kisses. At least three more minutes. Maria said, not wanting to get out of his embrace. Good. Tony said, pulling her closer to him. Eventually they lay there for ten minutes and then they had to get up. How are you? Tony asked Maria. He was of course very careful, afraid of hurting her, and it seemed to him that what had happened between them last night had pleased Maria as much as he had, but he was still worried about the girl. Very well. And you? I'm very inexperienced. Did you have a good time with me? She asked, blushing. Tony immediately put his arms around her and placed a light kiss on her lips. It was great, he replied. We'll tell our parents tonight. No, Maria objected. Let's not tonight. She was still afraid to imagine their reaction to such news. When? Maria, I don't want to hide and meet you secretly. Don't worry. I'll take the four if there is one. But I know they'll eventually digest it, understand and won't hold it against us. Let's do it next weekend. Why wait so long? I need to get in the mood. Saturday then, and no excuses later. Okay, Maria agreed. Go wash up, and I'll cook breakfast. Tony kissed Maria again and went to the kitchen. Stopping the car near Maria's institute, Tony wished her a good day, kissed her goodbye, and said that today he had a lot of work and they would not be able to meet, but he would call her when he was free. All day Maria smiled, not really getting into her studies. Her thoughts were far away from her right now, and there was nothing she could do about it. You've been in the clouds all day today, said her classmate Ariana, with whom they were on friendly terms. Are you in love? You could say that, said Maria. And who's the lucky guy? Someone from the course or from the institute? No, he's not from the institute. Maria was not going to go into details. Tony, kiss me please. Suddenly she whispered, after about half an hour of watching the movie. The man smiled and gently touched her lips with his lips. And then something happened that Maria didn't expect from herself. Tony didn't insist on more than a kiss, but he was inclined to it by Maria, not saying a word, but rather quickly releasing him from his clothes and caressing his body with her hands. Time to wake up. Maria heard Tony's quiet voice and opened her eyes slightly. Five more minutes. She whispered back and a smile appeared on her lips. Sophia. He answered, covering her neck with kisses. At least three more minutes. Maria said, not wanting to get out of his embrace. Good. Tony said, pulling her closer to him. Eventually they lay there for ten minutes and then they had to get up. How are you? Tony asked Maria. He was of course very careful, afraid of hurting her, and it seemed to him that what had happened between them last night had pleased Maria as much as he had, but he was still worried about the girl. Very well. And you? I'm very inexperienced. Did you have a good time with me? She asked, blushing. Tony immediately put his arms around her and placed a light kiss on her lips. It was great, 
he replied. We'll tell our parents tonight. No, Maria objected. Let's not tonight. She was still afraid to imagine their reaction to such news. When? Maria, I don't want to hide and meet you secretly. Don't worry. I'll take the fall if there is one. But I know they'll eventually digest it, understand and won't hold it against us. Let's do it next weekend. Why wait so long? I need to get in the mood. Saturday then, and no excuses later. Okay, Maria agreed. Go wash up, and I'll cook breakfast. Tony kissed Maria again and went to the kitchen. Stopping the car near Maria's institute, Tony wished her a good day, kissed her goodbye, and said that today he had a lot of work and they would not be able to meet. But he would call her when he was free. All day Maria smiled, not really getting into her studies. Her thoughts were far away from her right now and there was nothing she could do about it. You've been in the clouds all day today, said her classmate Ariana, with whom they were on friendly terms. Are you in love? You could say that, said Maria. And who's the lucky guy? Someone from the course or from the institute? No, he's not from the institute. Maria was not going to go into details. Secret? No, he works at Dad's clinic, Maria said, and it was basically true, because Tony worked with his father worked. Dentist? Aha, uh -huh. Maria said, are you going home? I'm waking for dinner. We were going to the mall. She's going to her sister's wedding. We're going to pick out a dress for her. Do you want to come with us? Ariana suggested it. I'm going home. Maria answered. See you tomorrow then. See you tomorrow. As Maria left, Mickey approached Ariana. Why are you so sour today? She asked him. Nothing. Do you happen to know if Maria is serious about this on the audit? He asked. What Audi? Ariana didn't understand. Well, on the grey Audi that often picks her up. Ariana laughed. So it's her brother who picks her up. But she has a boyfriend too. So Mickey, forget it and switch to another subject. Ariana replied. Brother, asked the man with his eyes bulging. Yeah, why are you so surprised? No reason. Mickey answered and walked away. He had seen Maria kissing this brother in the morning. In the evening, Tony didn't call, but came to their house with his parents. Maria was terribly afraid that he... Tony did not stay long in Maria's room. They talked a little, and then he went to sleep in the room where he once lived. Mickey arrived early on purpose and waited for Maria. When he saw the grey Audi, he hid behind one of the pillars near the entrance to the institute and watched. From this spot, he could see Maria kissing her brother. Holy shit, he was shocked by what he saw. He had never seen such a perversion before. Mickey took out his phone and took a few pictures. He didn't wait for Maria to get out of the car and went to the institute. Throughout the whole class, Maria saw Mickey staring at her with a very strange look. When they ran into each other in the cafeteria, she couldn't stand it and asked, May I ask why you stare at me all the time? Maria asked him. I'll tell you after class. He answered. I'm not really interested in the reason. Just stop looking at me like that. Said Maria and went to Ariana, who was already paying for her lunch. Mickey waited for Maria on the street after class. Happy that the grey Audi was not near the institute. Shall we walk to the subway? He asked when the girl went outside. No, Mickey, I've told you a million times I'm not going out with you. Stop following me already, Maria said irritably. I didn't know you were a pervert, Maria Lannister. He grinned nastily, then pulled his phone out of his jacket pocket and showed Maria the pictures of her making out with Tony in the car. I'm really curious. Do your parents know what their kids are doing? At the Institute too. No one knows yet, but that's just for now. He said in such a tone, as if there was a battle between them, in which she lost. Maria was frightened at first, and then suddenly began to laugh. Could she have thought that this underdog was spying on her? This is spy stuff. Mickey, are you playing spy? Maria asked through her laughter. No, 
I accidentally found out that you're with your own brother. Pervert. He replied, making a squeamish grimace. Without knowing anything, you shouldn't draw conclusions. He's not my brother. Naria stopped laughing and looked at her interlocutor like an idiot. Your brother comes for you or the Grey Auditory. He didn't understand. Ariana was obviously telling the truth. There was no doubt about it. No, we have different parents, so I'm not a pervert, but you're a total asshole. Not wanting to continue this conversation, Maria hurried away. When Tony called her in the evening, she told him about the situation and they laughed together. I hope that Mickey doesn't go running all over the Institute and spreading gossip, he said. What's there to gossip about? I told him that you and I are not related, answered Maria. He can present it differently, but there is no point in it. Maria, come to me tomorrow after the Institute. I'll give my father the spare keys and you take it from him. I think he'll understand right away if you give me the keys. Let's bet on Friday I'll come to you and on Saturday we'll go home together and talk to your parents. Maria suggested. It's a long way to Friday. Maria, I want to see you more than once a week. I want you to move in with me, Tony confessed. I miss you too, Tony, but I don't want it to be a mess. We should get together and have a proper talk. We'll do that on Saturday and then we'll go to your place on Friday. Okay. He sighed heavily. Kisses and good night's sleep. You too. Maria replied with a smile. Ariana immediately rushed to Maria as soon as she arrived at the Institute. Maria, this Mickey told me today that you are sleeping with your brother and lying that he is not your brother. She said quietly so no one would hear them. What a degenerate. Maria clenched her fists. Ariana, Tony really isn't my brother, she admitted. I don't understand anything. You said yourself that he's your older brother. Ariana looked pointedly at Maria. I did. His father married my mom when I was five and Tony was ten. Since then, we grew up together. Then my mom gave birth to Nancy. We both call our parents mom-dad, but Tony and I aren't related. Maria explained. Wow. So you were living together and suddenly you had an affair. No. It just started and Tony hasn't lived with us for a long time. Ariana, we were always good together. We just didn't realize we had different feelings for each other right away. How did your parents feel about it? Asked Ariana, flapping her eyes. We haven't told them yet. We're going on Saturday. There is nothing wrong with the fact that we love each other and want to be together. I'm nervous about it, but I think it'll be fine. Without shock, of course, will not do. But mom and dad we have normal, will understand, I think. I don't want any rumors to spread around the Institute. I won't tell anyone. And unless your brother and sister, there's nothing wrong with your affair. There's nothing to gossip about, Ariana replied. Exactly. Maria agreed with her and they went to their first class. Friday. Tony was waiting for Maria at the very door of the Institute, holding a beautiful bouquet of flowers. Ariana smiled widely when she saw him and then looked at Maria, whose face lit up with a happy smile when she saw Tony and without any shyness threw herself on his neck and kissed him on the lips. Noticing a disgruntled Mickey, Ariana immediately went over to him Stop staring at them, she said, and shut your mouth or your jaw will fall off. You said he was her brother. Mickey threw an angry look at his classmate. I was wrong. It's just that their parents are married. There's no blood relation between Maria and Tony, so they're not perverts. Okay, Mickey muttered, glanced at the kissing couple, and then walked away. Maria. And Tony hugged and walked to his car. So how are you doing at the Institute? That Mickey didn't spread any lewd rumors. Tony asked, starting the car. I told Ariana, but I told her everything as it was. It's just that before I told her you were my brother without going into details. Didn't your parents ask where you were sleeping tonight? They did. I told them I was going to the club with Sarah, Carlo and you. And since you live much closer to the club, I'd be staying at your place tonight. 
they react calmly and don't even seem to suspect anything. Maria smiled. Sarah is starting to have an affair with Carlo. Oh yeah, and you kept saying she liked me, said Tony. I know. It's a good thing she switched. Jealous of me. Tony smiled slyly. Nope, I knew you were indifferent to her, Maria replied. As soon as they were in Tony's apartment, he immediately hugged Maria and kissed her, taking her into the room. I missed you terribly, so I won't let you sleep tonight. He whispered, deftly releasing her from her clothes. I don't mind that at all. Maria replied, unbuttoning his jeans. She even felt a little ashamed of her lecherous behavior, but her desires overcame her shame. She felt so good right now, and she didn't want to leave Tony even for a minute. She didn't care about gossip if it got around the Institute. She wasn't afraid to confess everything to her parents. She wanted to be with him, not brotherly love, and what was happening between them now was beautiful and filled her soul with boundless happiness. After stopping first at a cafe to have breakfast, Maria and Tony went to her parents to finally tell them about their relationship. Are you afraid? Tony asked Maria before they entered the apartment. Not as much as before, she said, turning the key in the lock. Selena was the first to greet them. How was the dance? She asked, smiling at the children. It was fine. Tony answered, helping Marie take off her jacket. Wash your hands, come into the kitchen, I made pancakes. We just had breakfast at the cafe, so we'll have pancakes later. Tony answered, where's dad? In the office with the documents, Selena said, and Nancy went out with her friends. She'll be back by lunchtime. Mom, can you get dad for me, please? We need to talk, said Tony. What's wrong? She asked, and the smile disappeared from her face. Nothing bad, he said. Everyone gathered in the kitchen, and Tony was the first to speak. Mom, Dad, don't be nervous and don't react very violently, he said, noticing how Maria turned pale. The thing is that Maria and I, well, in short, we are not really brother and sister, and we have a slightly different relationship. We're serious and we want to be together. Selena turned white as a sheet, and Alexander frowned and stared at his son in amazement. I realize you're in shock, but there's nothing wrong with me and Maria loving each other, Tony continued. Yes, but Selena mumbled, not knowing what to say. What's the but, she thought, not finishing her sentence. Well, you, Alexander said and put his hands around his head. Mom, Dad, but Tony and I are not related to each other. We can be together and there is nothing wrong with it. Maria rambled on. I see now what you were doing when you stayed at his place. Selena said this with a note of reproach in her voice and looked at her daughter with a judgmental look. Not at all, said Tony in his own defense. I wonder how you realize that. Alexander raised his tone slightly. The man was clearly angry. They started tumbling around in bed and hit you. Daddy, Maria gasped and blushed. I'm just shocked. Alexander shook his head. Dad, we want to get married. We want to live together. What's that got to do with tumbling around in bed? Tony said. So you're going to start a family? Alexander sighed heavily. Is that a bad thing? You're looking at me as if Maria and I were incestuous. I understand that all this is unexpected for you and mom, but we don't want to hide our relationship and feelings from you. Tony replied. We need to all calm down, said Selena, and took a breath, and then an exhale, trying to come to her senses after such news. That's for sure. Alexander agreed with his wife. We'll have an interesting family. Although, you're really not brother and sister, so. Alexander waved his hand and got up from the table. Where are you going? Selena asked him. To get a whiskey? Do you want some? No, but I need a drink. Grab me some wine, Selena said. Mom, it's no big deal. Maria put her hand over her mother's. It's all very sudden. We didn't realize it was like this between you two. We couldn't even imagine it, Selena sighed. 
Are you against us getting married? Maria asked, looking sadly at her mother. You need to get over all this. Of course, you're not brother and sister, and you can have a relationship. It's just that we all lived as a family, and to me, you were both my children. Selena suddenly cried, and Tony immediately got up from his seat and hugged her. Mom, what are you doing? He asked and smiled slightly. Alexander returned to the kitchen with two bottles and poured whiskey for himself and wine for his wife. Selena, drink a little and calm down, he said, and the woman realized her head and looked at Tony. How are we going to tell Nancy all this? She asked. She knows that Maria and I are not related to each other. We'll explain everything. Don't worry, please. Oh, Selena took a glass of wine and drank it in one gulp. Looking at his wife, Alexander drank half a glass of whiskey, took a bite of lemon, wrinkled his nose, and looked at the children. When are we going to get married? He asked. We haven't applied yet, but of course we want to in the summer. Tony answered. Will you be staying at your place? Sure, I'd like Maria to move in with me now. Well, the man poured himself another whiskey and drank it all down again. I hope it's serious and there's no divorce in your future. He said, it can't be more serious. I've loved Maria for a long time and I'm sure I always will. Answered Tony. I'm sure that's a good thing. Selena, what do you think? He looked at his wife. What can I say? If they love each other, let them get married. The woman looked at the children and smiled slightly, and Tony hugged Maria without any shyness. So Nancy returned from her walk, and it was explained to her that Maria and Tony would soon become husband and wife. The girl, of course, was also shocked by such news, but she took it less emotionally than her parents. It wasn't that scary said Tony with a smile as he and Maria returned to his house, taking most of Maria's things. I was still terribly nervous though, she admitted. I'd noticed, but it's still good. He hugged the girl and looked into her eyes. Maria, I love you so much, and I'm very happy that we don't have to hide anything, as if we were criminals with you, he said. It made me feel so much better that we confessed everything. Mom and Dad had scared me at first, but I had faith that they would understand and wouldn't be against us. And I didn't doubt it, he answered. I'm still surprised that I didn't realize how much I loved you before, and not like my brother. Maria said with a smile, I didn't realize that I loved you differently either. The most important thing is that we finally realized it, and now we are together. Shall we go through your things? Let's go. They hugged and went to their room. Maria and Tony married in the summer and three years later they had a son. By then Maria had just finished her studies and had already done some work in a veterinary clinic. All her dreams came true, albeit with some nuances, because she no longer has an older brother, but she does not regret it at all.